So I think we're going to start to see those beginning domino pieces begin to fall, uh, ultimately leading to a world war. Now, more than likely, that big, huge continental war probably won't start in Canada. I think that they're going to remain pretty peaceful, but that's who I wanted to focus on for this video because it seems like if anyone is, it seems like that's the only nation that a lot of people are choosing. But I will say in the comment section, it's very split, and I love it. I love that everyone's very split with their choices. Everyone has uh, different ideas and, and opinions about these nations, and that's always much more fun. I always like when there's kind of a split, and it seems to be very evenly matched. I think a a lot of you guys have played with some of these nations before, so you know some of their really good, unique abilities. Um, and but at the same time, there are some nations that I know for me, like I might have played with only you know one or two, uh, so I might not know exactly how powerful the champ are. are the champ are really are, uh, but I want to focus on them at some point very soon because I love that they already have these two co uh, colonies out here on these islands. So, anyways, let's look at the uh, Canadian unique ability. So. They are, their unique ability is called the Keepers of Peace, and their mounted units can temporarily claim neutral lands and generate plus two happiness if garrisoned. Interesting. So I don't think that's going on right now. Um, I don't think that that would show up in the yields icon, will it? No. Well, they don't have any mounted units, so that would explain. They do have horses, though, so they can potentially get those units up at some point. Um, also, upon declaring a friendship, Canada and their friend both gain a plus one delegate uh, to the World Congress. Very obviously a really, really nice um, unique ability geared towards a victory. And those unique abilities are kind of the best. There are some nations in this game. Uh, let's look at the spy and what they said. Uh, so it looks like Crum is secretly planning to attack another civilization. And who is it going to be? Uh, Henry Parkers. Parks. Henry Parks. Okay, we'll have to keep an eye on for that. I don't know. It's Australia here. And uh, we are spying on Bulgaria. Interesting. Okay, so I didn't think that... Hmm, that seems like an interesting choice. I don't know if that's actually going to happen, but I guess, I, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, so as for their unique units, they have a great voyager, unlike, actually, you know, this is a, it looks like a great person. The voyagers are capable of creating fur resources on flatland tiles. Oh, so they might have a little bit of extra resources here, and I don't believe there are any furs at the moment on this particular map type. It doesn't look like it. Um, no. No, they've got a lot of copper, though, and they do have, actually, bison. Surprisingly, the Sioux do not have bison. Someone's already enchan uh, I'm sorry, enhanced the religion of Catholicism. Uh, Catholicism, what is wrong with me? Uh, the Pope has, in fact. And then we also have Bulgaria playing against Prussia, and Prussia does have this one lone city that's very, very undefended right here in the middle of, of this continent. So that would be a really, really good idea for Bulgaria to attack Prussia. And then finally, they also have a garrison artillery, Canada, that is. Um, and upon entering a fort or a citadel, the garrison artillery gangs the on guard for the hmm, promotion, which allows them to deal double the damage. Wow. So uh, the AIs love to build citadels, that's for sure, with um, generals. So I, pro I won't be surprised if we, we see a couple citadels and, and maybe Canada utilize that unique ability. But then again, it's unlikely because who knows exactly what the AI is thinking at, at, all, these, uh, at all times. Um, so pretty much Bulgaria is just plotting against everybody. That That's the idea that I'm getting. But not plotting against probably the nation that they should, and, and that's definitely, um, Vietnam. I think that they should, I, you know, I, we kind of need to see if there's been any declarations of friendships. I haven't really been keeping up with the whole, uh, diplomatic part of this game. We have Canada and the Philippines, so we've got a few declarations of friendships, but it's kind of confusing right now, um... So Canada might get pulled into a war just because someone else declares war on a peaceful nation. I don't know if that's the best plan. Okay, maybe I should just move that spy because they're pretty much plotting against everybody. Bulgaria has no friends uh, in the middle of this continent here. Nothing at all. Jeez, how many more units? Are they just purchasing units? Just one by one? It looks like it. Another religion has been enhanced. So I believe we are down to, I think, all of the religions in this world. Last time I checked, I think we're... Down to everything. World religion? No, we only got three. Okay, never mind. Oh, but this, yeah, that's, yeah, no more, no more can be founded. So, the only three religions are going to be Buddhism, Catholicism, and Confucianism. Uh, one by Finland, the Papal States, and Vietnam. So, these three empires are looking pretty good. Now, it's important to realize that the Pope and the Finnish Empire, both of their uh, regions... Uh, they're pretty close to each other. They're both uh, located on the eastern part of it. The there we go. That's what I was waiting for. They're located on the eastern part of this continent, which means that, 
Well, I mean, Vietnam has a really, really, obviously this is the bigger part of this Pangaea map, uh, not only in terms of cities, but but there's there's also not going to be any competition in terms of religion. So Buddhism is going to be really, really expansive, I think, and Vietnam is going to be even more powerful than uh, than they would have been normally. So this was actually Frederick, Frederick um, that was both Bulgaria as well as, who was this other person? That was both Bulgaria declaring war. Oh, and the Goths. Oh, my goodness. The Goths and Bulgaria teaming up against Prussia. So it's going to be a race for this one city. Um, Bulgaria, actually, you know what's funny? They both really, really need it. Uh, so it's the Goths, um, Bulgaria, and Scotland with the only, the only empires that only have their capital city so far. So these two nations really could use this next city, as well as it's going to, I mean, these are both very uh, militaristic nations. This is really interesting. This is very, very interesting. So let's just try to predict exactly what we, oh my gosh, it already almost fell. So this is certainly going to go in for Bulgaria's favor because I think Bulgaria goes first. Dang, that's insane. Look how fast it fell. I really might think this smarter AI is, is making a big difference. This smarter AI mod is, I think, making a huge difference. It was the Goths. Oh, wow. So the Goths just took that. Bulgaria now is still with just their capital. Now, I don't think that's going to make them very happy. I wonder what's going to happen next. I don't know if the AI is actually going to attempt to move over towards Berlin. It's technically possible. It's just going to take a really, really long time. Australia has all... Uh, Ali, uh, allied uh the congo and the congo are providing military units yes they are they're militaristic are there any more city states yes we have canada also allied to uh smarkand smarkand and that's it oh and milan allied to canada canada's playing such a smart game right now they're so smart such a a very intelligent nation so far they know they've got to go for that diplomatic victory that's how they do it um, like I said in the beginning, I love how you guys are split, but there is seems to be a a definite um, a, a definite well, how would I say a lot of people are voting for for Canada, and it is funny because it's 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 pretty interesting, only because they have a they have a very they have a really really good chance of winning this a very good chance, but it really depends. I mean, they're going to have to survive a war. There's no way they're going to win this game without going into at least one proximity war, whether it's from Iceland, the Pope, Hungary, uh, the Philippines. Someone's going to declare war on them. They're going to need to survive, and that Great Wall will definitely help them out, but they really need to expand those borders on the land a little bit more because, uh, obviously, if you could take away every movement you can from enemy AI units, then, yeah, I mean, that's because, you know, they'd have to move one tile, two tiles, three tiles. I mean, that's that's three turns just to get uh, next to their capital city. So the Great Wall is going to significantly help out Canada in defense, um, but if they don't have any units, it's not going to be looking so good. They just need to spam uh, range units. That would be enough. Bo uh, Australia and Bulgaria. Ooh, okay, that's an interesting friendship, as well as we have Afghanistan and Belgium. Signing a research, oh, a, a, a declaration of friendship. I think that's what that said. Australia and the Congo teaming up. All right, Bulgaria, what do you do now? You've got probably the biggest army in the world. If not the Sioux do, maybe the Sioux could. I think that maybe, so it looks like we might see kind of a team kind of gearing up here. I, I wouldn't be surprised if we have this ultimate like military alliance between the Sioux, Bulgaria, and the Goths at some point. Maybe going after Vietnam, maybe uh, maybe going after Mali here in the south because this this city's on the verge of, of, of dying at any point, really. Um, the Inuit, the Inuit. I'm sorry, there it is, the Inuit. I I I got it for you guys, just for you guys. I know that uh, we talked about this. I think that they, they know that there's snow up here, and I really, really hope that the AI... Yes, yes, there they are. Perfect. Great. I'm so glad. I was so worried that they, were in, they weren't going to get to the snow, but they did. Awesome. I am, I, I'm very, very happy for them. That's going to be a pretty good city for them as well. I, I wonder if they're going to go next to these hills. I mean, probably next to the mountain would be good, but, you know, there's a lot of production over this way. I cannot wait to see and to look at their unique ability now that it's in the snow. That's, oh, I'm so glad they got that. I'm hoping they get up another city, too, in the snow as well. But you got to watch out for the Philippines, although the Philippines already have three cities, so maybe they're not looking into that. Maybe they're like, oh, we're fine. Everything is fine. Okay, so the Pope has built another wonder. Seems to be a lot of wonder whoring up in the north here, definitely from Canada and the Papal States. 
No more wars have broken out, and I think that the domino effect theory won't necessarily happen in this situation just because nobody lost any units. Prussia barely lost anything. They still have, well, I mean, they've got, they're pretty weak, and you know what? Finland could declare something offensive at some point. It might actually happen. Um, or maybe Iceland as well. I mean, the, the units are just building and building and building, and uh, I have to say, I, I fear for a lot of these nations. Scotland looks like it's going to be able to defend themselves. Scotland seems like it might do a pretty good job, as well as maybe Afghanistan. Afghanistan's got some stuff, I and mean, they got two cities, so it's not bad. Uh, now, Afghanistan really needs mountains. Looking into their unique ability, they, they really need ma uh, mountains, but they also have a very fast, unique unit, and I believe it's a, uh, a cavalry unit. I think, and, and it's something something about it's being really, really fast. Again, I have some notes in front of me, but I don't have the exact information. Uh, again, we're gonna go over all their, uh, <coughs> excuse me, all their bonuses before each video, and we're gonna get to Afghanistan at some point. So Bulgaria and Afghanistan have signed a research agreement. See, that's important, because a lot of these nations, like Canada, that are getting up all these friendships, um, that is an awesome opportunity for them to get up research agreements and maybe to pull ahead in science. Uh, now it's 100, it's turned 100 and almost 20. Uh, we'll probably save the infoatics view for next video. Uh, I'll probably look into that. Again, something that I really like about this campaign, it's it's, it's going to be a little bit shorter. It's not going to go up to like 50 videos like the previous ones. And I actually really like that. Um, it, it'll definitely go on for a while because I think removing the technologies uh, from these you know, immortal starting AIs will significantly slow it down. It won't be as fast as other games. So I'm, I'm glad for that, but it definitely won't be... Uh, Anything like the other ones as well. I'm, I'm hoping around a 35 video series, maybe 30 video series, which would be perfect. Uh, I really like that because I do plan on obviously expanding upon these battles, looking at the mods that were successful, where they're successful, why each mod was successful, and then trying to figure out how we can duplicate that formula, maybe in an AI-only world. Um, I have considered a few different ideas in terms of just AI-only regions uh, of the map. That's something that I, I'm definitely playing with. I, I really really want to uh, play with the idea of an AI only Africa. That is something that I've, that's been on my mind for a really, really long time. So we'll see exactly how the African civs survive here, like Mali, uh, who is kind of absolutely essential for that idea. So what, what do we got? Um, cool. Afghanistan building up their own wonder, the Great Mosque. No more wars. Again, boom. And we have to keep an eye on this unique tile improvement that uh, the Anut are going to build along these tiles here. I'm wondering why they settled on the mountain, or on the hill. They could have got next to the hill, grabbed some production, and as well as uh, got next to this mountain. Because if you notice, it's very important that none of these AIs started off next to a mountain, which means no observatory, which means less science. None of them. Uh, they might have picked up a city, a second city next to a, a mountain, but none of the capitals started with a mountain. So it is pretty important for also slowing down science as well. That's something I really liked about this map. So a reformation already again to uh, Catholicism. Let's go ahead and look into, well, let's, let's wait. Let's wait. Oh, are there some more? Oh, these units are really trying to find more potential land. There is a lot for them as well up this way. And they might be the only nation going for the snow. It's certainly possible that they could be the only nations going for the snow. Uh, you know, a lot of the other civilizations might see this potential open land, but they're like, no, nah, I don't want to settle any of the snow. Afghanistan and the Philippines have made a public declaration of friendship. Let's go ahead and look into the religion now. So, so far the game is, uh, the strongest religion is going to the Pope with Catholicism, uh, grabbing a hold of four cities as of now. Finland is also growing down south. Vietnam is off to a slow start, but I think that's going to be kind of a slow burn there, and they're going to really uh, catch hold towards that middle to late game. I guess technically it's about the middle, the early part of the middle. Um, let's go ahead and check on some of this. So in terms of Confucianism, we have extra missionary strength. Now this is the enhancer. I'm kind of looking for the founders. That's a big one. So spread of science when using missionaries or prophets, okay, that's pretty good. Plus culture, plantations, Pathion, okay, that's going to go to everybody. Follower, no more founders though. Well, still, uh, very good buildings to purchase with faith. Uh, so I guess that's going to be a lot of the southern part of this eastern map, uh, the, the, the parts that Finland is close to. They're going to be, be able to build a lot of really awesome faith buildings. Catholicism, on the other hand, their founder belief is that they get plus two gold for each city following this religion. Oh my goodness. So that's, that's going to be quite a bit of money for the Pope. But, you know, I mean, again, 
AI doesn't use money that well. And they're going to be able to uh, defend their cities a bit more with Goddess of Protection. That's a good one, too. Oh, they also got themselves a faith building. Okay, and finally, for the Vietnamese religion of Buddhism, we have Reformation is going to give them extra tourism on this side. Oh, I'm, I'm surprised the Pope didn't go for something like that in their Reformation because I don't think they... Yeah, they did that. They didn't. They didn't go for that exact that that belief, which probably would have been a bit better for them. And then finally, we have the uh, plus two faith for each foreign city following this religion. Hmm. Lots of extra faith. Temples provide extra happiness. That's good for everyone on the on the western side of this Pangaea map. So a little bit of extra happiness, I think we can assume for everybody over this way. And actually, I think that the most expansive civs are on the western hemisphere. So that might help a little bit of extra happiness per temple. Yeah, that'll probably help out a lot. Ooh, and that's Vietnam building the uh, the wonder with it. With, I think that's plus 10 or plus 12 happiness, something ridiculous like that. People like to smile the most right now. It is Canada, then Scotland. Okay. Yeah, that is. Vietnam's doing really, really good. Cannot wait to check the info addicts. I want to do it now, but I gotta. I need to wait. I'm I'm sorry. I just, I just need to wait. I need to do it at the very beginning of a video. That way we can all uh, kind of join in together and see exactly who is, you know, that's that's when we're all focusing in the most. Uh, so it should be around like a, a wrap-up for as of the first 130 turns. Now what do we have? The Philippines and Afghanistan have signed a research agreement. The Goths have, they. I mean, picking up the city hasn't made them significantly bigger. Uh, it is remaining as a puppet, you can see that, but uh, it only has one population, which is... Okay, it's okay. It's a good spot for a city. I, I will give them that. That's a very good spot. You've got wheat. Uh, you've got lots of hills. You don't have much food, but that's okay. I mean, that's what happens when you settle next to the plains. Uh, who knows? You'll probably pick up this hill tile over this way. Canada's ally to Almonte. Dang. Is that the third city state ally for Canada? A Diplo victory might seriously be on the horizon. It, I mean, we still are a ways away. There's the second war, and we actually have the Sioux versus Mali. Not too surprising there. Now, maybe this will show us a... Uh, well, it depends on how smart the Sioux AI is. I could see... I don't know if Australia is smart enough. I think we all can assume that more than likely this war is going to go for Australia. It's probably going to lean for... Uh, I'm sorry. It's going to lean towards the Sioux obviously winning... Now, it depends on how many units exactly the Sioux destroy, as well as how many units they actually send over towards the capital. It is possible for them to attempt to send over a lot of units towards the capital. If we see a lot of these, both of these nations lose a lot of units, though, I guarantee you someone like Vietnam or Bulgaria is going to go after the Sioux, or we could see maybe Australia go after Mali here. It really depends. Australia doesn't have that many units. I guess it could be the Goths that go after Mali as, uh, Mali as well. So the Philippines and Canada have signed a research agreement. A bunch of research agreements going around. Uh, the good thing about Canada is they only border, right now, they only heavily border the Philippines. And I think that they're somewhat uh, on a on good relationship. Boom. And, oh, another war. Yep, that's, there you go. And uh, the, uh, the kind of domino effect has hit. And that is actually Iceland sending over a ton of troops towards Prussia. This is very, very bad. Do not forget that Bulgaria and the Goths are both still at war with Prussia. So um, I'm not sure if this kind of influenced Iceland's decision at all. But it, it might have. It definitely could. So we have two major wars going on. Technically, there's three. The Sioux are going to absolutely roll over this one. Um, it looks like the Goths have given Prussia peace. So boom, the, the Sioux took that tr that city very easily away, and it actually it looks like the Sioux are going to continue onward for their capital. That seems like to be that seems to be a legitimate thing that's going on. Bulgaria and the Philippines have signed a research agreement. Hmm, they're going to need to protect their capital right away, or this is not going to go well. Again, I'm very excited to see exactly how many units the Sioux lose, though, because Bulgaria still hasn't. They, they don't really have anything to do right now. For some reason, they don't want to. They want. They don't. They don't want to go towards Vietnam, uh, even though they are. You know, that's really that's a really valuable part of the of the Pangaea map. Um, so if the Sioux lose too many units, Bulgaria could kind of go after this capital, which I don't know. I mean, there's lots of things, lots of things that could happen there. Oh yeah, there's there's a huge war going on right here in this small little Gulf of Mali that I'll probably refer to this this region as the Gulf of Mar Gulf of Mali. Anyways, guys, I'm gonna have to stop right there. How's Iceland doing? Dang. Woo! It's, it's starting, guys. It is totally starting. So I thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys tomorrow.